Hi, good evening. Welcome to the May 19th Cape Elizabeth Town Council meeting. Could we have the roll call, please? Council Chair McCoslin? Here. Councilor Garvin? Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. And Councilor Sullivan? Here. Will you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, the table. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Do we have any town councillors who have any reports or correspondence tonight? Yes, Patty. Yes, um, I do. Um, Patty, if I could just interrupt for one second. We have a little bit different setup tonight, and so I think particularly the people on this side, if you want to sit back just a little bit and look toward the camera, it might be better for the people who are watching at home. Okay, Thanks. Hope you can see me. Um, I was going to say, as we know as the council, one of our um, communication and our reach goals this year was to continue um, to gather citizen input and to encourage a dialogue um, between council and our community members. And um, Councillor Lennon and Garvin and I, with the assistance of Deb Lane, have organized um, two events this year, the first of which is going to happen on Wednesday, June 8th. Um, it'll be from 7 to 8.30 p.m. It'll take place at the library in the new conference room. And this first event is going to be um, a little bit different than the event that was in September in that we are going to have kind of an informal um, setting, um, some refreshments of course, but really looking for citizens to come with and ask questions, talk about what's hot on their mind, and to really give us some feedback on the work we're doing. So we're hoping for a well-attended event and a successful event, and I hope that people come in droves and um, let us know what they think. One other. Go for it. My second one was that um, just want to let the council know that the Alternative Energy Committee is up and running. I think we just had this last Tuesday our third meeting, and um, the group is awesome. They're, they're literally um, the energy from the group, the, um, the expertise and the knowledge each of the person um, brings is super. There's some great syner synergy going on, and we're still in the researching phase, um, so there's no recommendations as of yet, but I'm really hopeful that we're going to have a, a, a super outcome um, with this committee, and I'll keep you posted. The next meeting, though, is on, um, to let you guys know, is uh, Tuesday, June 14th, so anybody who's interested, um, come, come in. Thank you. You're Anyone else? Any other council members who would like to report? No? Um, next up on our agenda is citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who'd like to speak tonight to anything not on the agenda? No? I don't see that there is anyone, so we'll move on to the next item. We do have um, Councillor Garvin with us now, and I just wanted to mention I think that Councillor Jordan may be coming a little bit later, but I'm not sure that she'll make it tonight because she has a conflict with a family obligation. So we will move on at this point to item number 60 through 65. These are items that were tabled from our May 9th meeting. I'm going to ask the finance chair, Kathy Ray, if she would introduce the first item, number 60. Do we have to take that item off the table? Okay, so I move that we take um, the item, um, was it 60, 65? 60 the, through 65? Yes, off the table from the May 9th. Do I need a motion for you? Yes, I for just that made from it. you? Thank you. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Patty. Discussion? No. All in favor of that? Great. Thank you for that correction on Robert's rules. Okay. We'll move on to item number 60. All right, so item number 60 um, is the, um, the municipal budget. So I move that the town, the Cables of Town Council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 9th, 2016, does hereby adopt the municipal budget of $11,932,161.10 for fiscal year 2017. Um, I would say that the gross appropriations would be handled by the town manager uh, because I'm not going to expect to do that. And I will say that that is a 1% reduction in the proposed budget. 
So you're moving for a 1% reduction of the total yes. that was presented in our packets and that we discussed at the public hearing on May 9th, correct? Great. Right. Is there a second on that? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion? Can you just repeat what the number was again? Sure. Uh, 11 million. $932,161.10. It's at the 1% reduction from the proposed budget is a reduction of $120,526.88. Yes. Mike, can you tell us uh, what you cut to get that? You know, I wouldn't cut anything. It'd be up to the town council to make the cuts. Well, I mean, how did you adjust this to be 1% less? No, nope. he didn't. I did. Oh. How did you adjust this to be 1% less? Because I've asked the, I asked when we had our meeting um, on May 9th, I asked the school department to cut 1%, and I'm also asking for fairness to the town. I'm asking the town to, to cut 1% as well. So the budget you're asking us to vote on to... The motion I made is for a budget that's 1% less than what is proposed. Oh. Well, how are we supposed to know what's in the budget? What's in your proposed budget? The, as I said, the town manager would, dis, I would su suggest that the town manager would allocate 1% reduction in the numbers that he has proposed in his budget, or, or however he, I mean, he may say, I'm not going to, you know, uh, propose 1% less in administration, but I am in um, animal control. I'm, I'm just throwing those numbers out. It, I, I suggest that it would be up to him as it was up to him that how he proposed it to begin with. Kathy, could I just ask you a quick question? Sure. Is there a particular rationale for a 1%? Does it, in your mind, does that correlate to a particular number in people's tax bills or in the tax well, rate? Or is it the budget itself that you're concerned about and that you have a particular issue with? It's the budget itself. And I thought when I got to the school part, I would explain more about my concerns, specifically about the school budget. So. In other words, I'm asking the municipal, municipal side to take the same cut as I'm asking the school side. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Sorry, did you want to go first? No, you raise your hand. Go ahead. I, I just, I, I can't vote on a budget that we haven't discussed, reviewed, looked at, heard from the citizens on at enormous length. So I'm, 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 I'm sort of surprised. Like I'm, I'm completely unready to vote on this, let alone have a discussion, because I don't even have anything bef in front of me what, we're, what the budget is. Jessica? Well, a 1% reduction, uh, which Councilor Ray uh, discussed <coughs> at the workshop, would amount to a $120,526 decrease in municipal budget. I mean, if we pass this decrease, I mean, the town manager would likely propose some budget adjustments, you know, and what he's already proposed to cut that amount. I support that because I went back and did, you know, I went back to 2004 and <clears throat> uh, looked at everything. This is this municipal budget is currently 3.8 percent. A 1 percent drop would put it at 2.8 percent, which I think is reasonable, responsible, and prudent. Since 2000, well, let me put it this way. In 2004, the municipal budget was 4.2 million, and now it's 12 million, 52,688. Um, at the workshop, I handed out everyone a Social Security um, cost of living um, rate history. Um, and since 2004, uh, where's my note here? Security, Social Security cost of living increases have averaged only 1.82%. In the years 2009, 2010, 2015, and this year, 2016, there was no increase for people on Social Security. Cape Elizabeth has an aging population, and I think that we need to try to slow this train of increases. And I think 1% is reasonable. I don't think it's going to be in any way catastrophic for the municipal budget to do that. Patty? Um, I guess my feeling on this is this, that you know, Mike and his department heads put a lot of time and thought into bringing forth a budget that um, is an effective and efficient use 
of the monies that it takes to make this town chug along. Well, I can really appreciate what you're saying, both Kathy and you, Jessica. I, I feel like what's brought forth is what it needs. Um, and, and I really think that they, they work really hard to make it as lean as possible and to be fair to what they, what needs to do to make this town run. Um, so with that, I would not be supporting the 1%. I feel like what there's been a lot of work done and I feel like it's a little arbitrary just to say a, a cutting 1%. And that's kind of where I rest it with it, with all the you know, do this well. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Sarah. I mean, I guess I agree with Patty, but my bigger issue is that the timing is, seems completely way too late. I mean, if you wanted 1% cut, I feel like that conversation needed to start months ago with as Patty said before, the department heads even submitted their budgets and so forth, or at the very least, after we got looked at the very first issue of the budget and said, uh, no, you know, this is too high, we need 1%, but we, we're, we're so far down the line now that it, it just seems, I don't even, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. It seems, it seems um, impulsive. And, and somewhat irresponsible. I mean, we, we, we've been through the whole process. We're here just to vote on what we've discussed at enormous length, not only us, but the, but the citizens and, and everyone else. So I, I won't be supporting that. Kathy? Could I just um, address that? I, I brought this up at, the May 9th, at our May 9th workshop, so I don't feel that it's um, impulsive. Um, I think I was pretty clear then that I, I was looking for a 1% reduction in both budgets. And I said I would continue to look for that, and I am following through with that this evening. So I just want to um, just address that. So thank you. Thank you. Jessica? Yep, and me too. Um, after we had the school budget uh, workshop, uh, you know, which, is our, which was our, you know, first opportunity to review that with the school board. When I, when I went back and looked at um, other figures, um, I also would point out, and I think I just neglected to do that a minute ago, that since 2004, the property tax increases on the median price home in Cape Elizabeth, a $300,000 home, have increased by 18.9%. So what I'm saying is, when you look at 38.8% for the town, 3.2% the school board, school department, you look at the overall picture of how much our taxes are going up year after year after year. In aggregate, looking at everything we've been discussing in all this time, I'm saying we need to slow this down a little bit. And I think that 2.8 and 2.2 are very reasonable. And when you've got a budget of 12 million, I think it's reasonable to just there could be a little more efficiency found. And so I don't think it's arbitrary. I think it's prudent. Anyone else? No? Mr. Brinkley. Yes. Yeah, th thank, thank you, Chair McCausland. I do think that the budget represents the priorities of the town council. I think if you look back at the original March budget message that, uh, that I prepared at the beginning of the budget, it explains that, you know, the, if you look at personnel, for instance, one of the, the reasons for an increase is we have more, we've taken community services and we're funding instead of a, a half-time professional to work on senior issues, we're funding a full-time person, very much a priority of the council. Uh, the, the next largest item going up in the budget relates to the debt service uh, account for principal and interest. And the number one item in that is the, the principal expense for the recycling center. Uh, that includes, it's 140000 for that principal for that and the, the pool humidity system. And, you know, I think, you know, the alternative is, you know, not, not supporting uh, the, the referendum in June, which I think is, is not, I think the citizens should support it. And, you know, we could put a stop to the, the improvements to the pool, and that would probably result in closing the pool. Uh, I think those are very valuable services. You know, it, it's, we can always look at things, we can always look at cuts, but, uh, you know, it's just very difficult to be looking at reductions on May 19th uh, when, uh, you know, I think the Council's been pretty clear on its priorities uh, since the beginning of the year. The other thing is, you know, the, you would, and I'm not sure I 
the numbers exactly with the percentages, but you said the municipal budget at one year was blank and this year it's blank. Well, I, is that including like the community services transfer <laughs> 1.7 million into it? Uh, well, yeah, since 2004. But we didn't, we did you do apples to apples both times? No. Yeah, I think you've got to do apples to it's apples overall. both times. And yeah, without that, um, you know, I, I get concerned with those numbers being presented in a way that not comparing apples to apples. And if you look at the 18.9 percent, you know, I, I think I calculated that for you when you asked me to. Yes. And you look at what was the average per year that that I gave you on that? 1.8. One one point uh, five, I think. Uh, oh, one point five. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was an average of 1.5 percent, and 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 that's without. You know, it's actually a little bit of that because the 18.9 is, you know, the the accumulated effects. So, you know, so the, the you know the, the actual increase has been closer to, and and I'm and I'm talking town, school, community service, county combined. I'm talking about the tax, the actual taxes paid on someone on a $300,000 home. That actually, since 2004, has increased an average of 1.4 or 1.5 percent. So, you know, I think it's all how the numbers are. Are presented, and I, you know, my sense is, yeah, you know, 18.9 percent sounds like a lot, but I think when you look at it on an annualized basis of 1.5 percent, and you know, recognizing the community's expectations for a good school system, and for you know, uh, you know, all the different municipal services, uh, see programs for seniors, uh, you know, I think when most citizens really look at the numbers, uh, you know, I go back to the public hearing, uh, no one spoke. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I think that the school board, the municipal government, the councils uh, have generally been fairly responsible. Thank you. Yes, Jamie? Um, <clears throat> I, I support the idea of making sure that we are running our budgets as efficiently as possible and, and putting the, the least burden um, that we can on the taxpayers of the town. This having been my first time going through this process, um, I, w what I don't agree with in this case is, is the idea of just saying 1% across the board and, and then putting it on Mike for his discretion um, for how to make those appropriations. Um, ha having gone through this, it, it seems like we're given enough opportunity and enough detail to see where we think there may or may not be wasteful spending happening and from my view of things I, I agree that number one it, it's a it's a pretty um, lean budget to begin with and number two um, that it reflects as Mike just said the priorities of the town I think um, what what we should look at if if we're to be thinking that reductions are required or um, or desired from any of us is to, to really look and scrutinize the detail without micromanaging each of these accounts and department areas for sure but um, you know looking at well what what is the thing that sticks out as, as perhaps being the wasteful thing a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars or thereabouts is not that big of a number um, and, and an overall one percent reduction but I, I just think that the nature of um, how we're approaching this uh, arbitrary is not the right word and Kathy I don't mean to diminish what you're trying to achieve by saying arbitrary um, but I feel like we could be more directed in in the cost savings measures if that's what we're truly trying to get to, as, as, a, as opposed to just saying 1%. That's just my opinion. Thank you. I will just say I agree with that. I think if we had seen items in the agenda as we went along that we thought were um, overpriced or over budgeted, then we had plenty of opportunity to look at that and comment on that along the way. I don't remember in any of our discussions and I don't remember in looking through the entire budget myself, line item by line item, line item seeing anything in there that stood out as an item that could be cut by 1% or any other percentage. And we did spend a, a great deal of time, I think, going through those numbers. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak before we vote on the motion on the floor? No? All in favor of Kathy's motion, which was, I'm going to ask Deb if she'd read it back to us. It is to reduce the municipal budget at, as proposed um, by $125,526.88. All in favor of that motion? Thank you. Opposed? That motion does not pass. I'll be looking for another motion 
for the municipal budget on item number 60. Okay. I think what we have is the um, proposed language, and as it says on here, draft motions are based on what was set for the public hearing. Councilors may make any motion of their choosing, but what we have for draft language is on the second page of our agenda. If anyone would like to make a motion. Should we go right here on this one? The first page right there. Moved. No, it's on the second page on my printout, but it may no, just be the right. font size. Okay, I'll give it. Um, I will move the order the cables of the town council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 9th, 2016, does hereby adopt the municipal budget for fiscal year 2017 and hereby makes the following gross appropriations for each listed department. Should I read through these? Or I, I, as listed? I was going to say is contained and detailed in the packet. Is that contained and detailed in the packet? Just as listed. With a total municipal um, dollar, is this um, 12 million of 52, 688. 688, did I get that correct? Do I have a second on that motion? Thank you, Jamie. Discussion on that number and on that motion. Anyone? Anyone want to comment any further on item number 60? Again, I will just say I think we went through a very thorough deliberative process on the budget this year. I've done 25 years of business-related budgeting. I think this was a very thorough process. I'm very happy with where we ended up in terms of process this year. I think we spent a huge amount of time, went through line item by line item. I'm proud of where we have ended up. And as always, I think we can expect that our town manager and his staff will do their best to stay within or below the numbers that we've budgeted. Anyone else have anything to say? No? All in favor of that motion? Opposed? Thank you. That passes for two. We will move on to item number 61. And again, I'll ask if the finance chair, Kathy Ray, could make that motion, introduce the item and make the motion. Thank you. I move that the town of Cape Elizabeth um, appropriate a total school budget of 24 million. Forty-four thousand six hundred sixty-nine dollars and sixty cents, which is a one percent reduction of the proposed budget of twenty-four million two eighty-seven five forty-five. Thank you. Is there a second on that motion? Thank you, Jessica. Discussion. I'd, yes, like, I'd like to um, indicate why yep. I've asked for that. Please do. Um, Currently, I can't support the current school budget as it stands. I asked for a 1% decrease in both the school and town budgets, but did not get a majority of counselors to support this. I'll list my reasons in no particular order. I don't believe we can continue to have budget increases above the rate of inflation. The current CPIU is 0.9%. The school budget tax incre rate increase is 3.9% with an expenditure increase of 1.97%. 98% of revenue in the town comes from residential property taxpayers with 2% coming from commercial taxpayers. I feel this creates a burden on the residents. The school board's class size policy was changed in November of 2015 to allow for smaller class sizes. I apologize that a lot of this is numbers, so I'll try not to go too fast. Um, our student population has gone from 1,740 students in 2001 to a projected 1,600 students in 2017. The corresponding budgets have gone from $13,617,956 in 2001 to a proposed $24,287,545 in 2017. There, this is an increase of $10,669,589. That's over a 15-year period. In 2012 and 2013, there were 121.15 regular teachers for 674 students. The proposed budget has a 121.2 has a 
regular teachers for 1,600 students. This clearly indicates to me that class size has decreased. The funding formula uh, from the state has decreased money to Cape Elizabeth for the coming years. Although I don't agree with all the calculations and I was on the school board when that all came about, the formula, uh, one reason for the de decrease is the drop in student population. A little bit of what Jessica said, um, the median home in Cape Elizabeth of 314,000 would see a property tax increase of $144.44 with the proposed budget. I'm concerned about folks on fixed incomes, in, incomes absorbing that cost. And as Jessica mentioned, Social Security has not, gone, gone, has not increased in, in many years. We also have now have a summer school program for 75 students, which is included in the proposed budget. The cost of this, I believe, is $21,340. I think this cost should be borne by the parents of summer school students and not the taxpayers. I could say a few more things, but I will leave it at that. So that's why I am supporting the motion that I made. Thank you. Anyone else have comments? Yes, Jessica. Yep. Um, I'm uh, supporting a 1% decrease for the school budget as well as the municipal budget. And I, I came to that conclusion after our budget workshop. Um, and listening to Councilor Ray and then going over numbers and the history. Um, and I know that this year was particularly difficult because of a big uh, drop in the number from the state. Um, and I think the school board um, worked very hard to present a much leaner budget um, and um, to, uh, in the face of that as well. So I certainly commended, commend them for that. Um, but again, when you look at the trend, I mean, what, about 120, I can see what your number, 120 students down and significant increases um, into the millions over these years, I still think um, this is a, a trend that needs to slow down. Uh, and with respect to what the manager said about uh, community services going back and forth, you know, and teasing that out. The bottom line is that tax bill is what goes to the to the residents. The overall tax bill is what goes to them. Whatever we vote on, they have to pay or ultimately lose their homes. I mean, so they don't have any choice. And so again, I say it is fiscally prudent to slow this train down. And so that's why I support a 1% decrease um, we do have excellent schools, we have excellent town services, but, you know, having also been in business, there are always more efficiencies. And it is all, to me, it's also the, the um, image of constant increases. And I do think it's worth looking at that and slowing them down um, and, uh, I guess that's all I have to say, but I think that that kind of a million dollar increase over time is, is pretty tough, again, in the face of a well over 100 student decline in enrollment. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else would like to say anything on the council? Yes? Yeah, I'll say something. Um, this is a tough one because I agree on many of the points that the 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 budget has increased at that rate. But I'm not sure we can get off that train, to be honest, because I think if you look at, we looked at what benefits and salaries were 83% of this budget that leaves, you leaves 18% of wiggle room, which is even if you were to crush that, it, it, there's just not a lot there. I think we, this town values educating our children and puts it as a top priority. And while I completely agree with you and, and sympathize with people who are um, aging and having trouble paying their taxes. Um, I, th I think it's, it's, it's just, it's the will of the people to make sure that we have one of the best school systems and we are competitive with our kids. And again, that number of salaries is just something that is going to go up, especially as we retain teachers and we, you know, have that. Um, that would be one. The second um, thing would be, I think it's as we move forward and have conversations about 
other potential revenue streams which would help in this community, I would hope that our community would think about um, that to help ease this um, tax burden, to pull it a little bit off of property taxes. That would be just a side comment in this. Um, so I will not be supporting um, the number, Kathy, that you've proposed, but I, I, I sympathize with your rationale. I just, um, I feel that the work that's been done by the school board, and it has been thoughtful work, um, and we, they are elected to go through and sift through and make sure that they are funding the priorities to, for our children. So I'm going to support, um, if we get there, their, um, I prefer to support their budget as presented. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, Jamie. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I concur uh, with what Patty said. I, I think our biggest problem here is this gigantic part of the school budget, 82%, um, that's a negotiated, con you know, um, collectively bargained uh, portion of their budget. And um, unfortunately, that, that really, you know, backs you into a corner in terms of what ability there is to um, get leaner, get more efficient, um, and as a result of that, uh, you know, save save on the overall budget. Um, I think the school board has done a good job this year of, like like in the municipal budget, presenting, um, you know, what what they feel and I agree with is a responsible um, set of expenses. Um, the the planning process for developing a school budget is a very difficult one given the moving targets of the multiple variables that um, you know we don't have to uh, reconcile on the on the municipal budget side as often um, I think again as I'll reiterate what I said on, on the municipal budget I, I think as we went through in detail um, there were not things that I saw within the, the school portion of the budget um, that represented extravagance or, um, uh, y you know, luxuries, if you will, um, but rather a, a responsible budget designed to, to meet the mission of the school department as well as, um, you know, the goals and objectives that we have for, for teaching our kids in town. So for that reason, um, I, I support the budget as presented, um, uh, the full budget as presented. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments? Jessica? Yeah. I'd like to say again that I, as I said a few minutes ago, I, I certainly do appreciate the efforts of the, on the part of the school department and um, it was tough year given the cuts from the state. But I would like to, uh, to uh, point out to my fellow counselors that we represent all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, not just the school parents. We all want excellent schools. We have excellent schools and excellent public services. But, um, you know, I certainly am very concerned for those seniors and young families struggling that we perhaps work harder um, to slow the train of tax increases down. And that's why I'm sticking to my 1% request. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Sarah. I don't think that, I feel when I support the school board budget that I am, I do have all the citizens in mind, very much so, because I think um, strong schools are, are the single biggest um, reason that our property taxes are as high, are, I'm sorry, our property values are as high as they are, they maintain, maintain their value, actually they've gone up enormously lately. Every person I talk to who doesn't live in Cape wants to live in Cape. Every person who I talk to who has moved here, moved here primarily for the schools and secondarily for the open land and space. And um, property taxes, you know, can be difficult, but people should take heart because their home values have um, only benefited from that. And there's no way to cut and do anything, you know, if we start <clears throat> not paying our teachers' salary increases, you stop attracting and retaining the best teachers. That's just a fact. Um, so I, in no way do I feel that supporting the school board budget is only um, 
representing the, 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 the families with children in the schools at all. So I think, I think supporting strong schools and budgets that the school board responsibly believes they need is, is a vote for all members of our community. <clears throat> Kathy? Um, I wanted to uh, address um, something that uh, Jamie said um, with reference to the 82% salaries. Um, and although the salaries are part of a negotiated contract, it's about um, the numbers of employees. The numbers are not negotiated. Those are at um, the school boards or the school departments um, within their purview of changing them. Um, and um, the negotiated contracts are hard. I mean, I was on the school board for eight years, and I did a bunch of those negotiated contracts, and it's a very difficult um, um, thing to do. Um, and it's, I do support the, the teachers. Um, but I, when I looked at the numbers, um, I think I maybe go to what Jessica was saying. Um, she was talking about slowing the train down. If you, the numbers don't lie. Um, and if you look at the numbers specifically, um, one of the things that was my biggest concern was class size. Um, if you have 121 regular teachers teaching um, 1,740 students, I think it was, and then you have 121 teachers teaching 1,600, you got smaller class sizes. Now, I know um, when I was on the school board, I we talked a lot about class size, and I know that um, teachers, parents, would prefer smaller classes. If you're a parent, you'd prefer your child in a smaller class. If you're a teacher, you'd prefer to teach smaller classes. Um, but where's the cutoff? You know, where is the appropriate number? I don't know ever, ever hearing what the appropriate number was. I think there, there's, you know, suggested ranges and so forth. Um, but, you know, I. I I came to my conclusions looking at specifically at the numbers. I didn't come to my conclusions based on I didn't think the school board did a good job or I didn't think the superintendent and their staff did a good job or any of those things. I'm not questioning their devotion to, to the job any more than I question the counselor's devotion to their job. Um, I mean, we all get paid the big bucks, right? Um, this is a volunteer opportunity and I think we all do our very best to try to uh, support the town. But I, I look at these numbers and I'm a little overwhelmed by thinking, um, I think as Jessica said, wow, can we slow this down a little bit? I mean, I think about a mother, a single mother trying to put braces on the kids, or her kids' teeth of, I think they were about 5,800 when my daughter had them. Um, those are, those, I don't want them, those folks to be making choices. You know, do I continue to send my child to Cape Elizabeth schools, which I want to do? I mean, they were a good school when I went here. Um, I graduated in 77. Um, my husband graduated in 76. My daughter graduated in 2010. I'm, com I'm committed to the town. Um, and I want to support it as much as possible. But I also think that we have to keep everybody in mind. And do I think if we gave them more money, they'd do a terrific job? Yes. Do I think if we give them less money, they're going to do any less of a job? No. I don't. I think they will still do a terrific job. I think we all live within a budget, and I think that we sometimes have to make choices about what we can and can't afford. You know, maybe not what we want, but what we need. So that's, I just wanted to address that because it's, it's not a given that um, negotiated contracts keep the numbers up. It keeps the, it keeps the certain salary range and so forth. And, um, when I did one of the negotiations, I think they were kind of surprised that I um, supported a larger salary increase for them. But I am concerned about class size um, and the other things I just mentioned. So, thank you. Thank you. Jamie? Um, Kathy, I don't think any of us are questioning your commitment to the town by any means or, or um, your uh, you know, experience as uh, an alum of the Cape Schools and a parent of an alum. Um, I, I think I, I think the numbers can be a little bit misleading on the reduction in the overall uh, number of students and the enrollment. And as I, you know, what what I saw as we went through the process 
of reviewing all this was that when taken over a, a more longitudinal view like that, um, there is certainly, you know, cause for uh, a red flag or cause for alarm, whatever you want to say, um, about the comparison between the enrollment and the number of teachers. But what, what we saw on a year-over-year -year basis was that um, that's a more uh, sort of normalized rate, if you will, and that it also doesn't necessarily correlate to, well, with X number of students, you know, X number reduced enrollment, then you, you need exactly this number fewer teachers. That all aside, I, I think what the bigger driver, though, of this rate over that longitudinal view is sort of the, what I'd say is a more exponential rate of increase in the salaries and more specifically in the benefits that's driving that, that increase in, in, in the budget here and not the fact that there may be, you know, however many teachers um, more than you feel is necessary for the appropriate enrollment. I, I, think, it's, I think it's more the amount of the salary, the, the, the rate at which the benefits are increasing that like in any other business in, in the private sector where, um, you know, companies are having to reduce the amount of, you know, their uh, contribution to their employees' health insurance and things like that because they, the, you know, the costs are just skyrocketing to a point that, um, you know, that's that's what I feel is the real driver here. And 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 yes, even though it's a collectively bargained contract, you can reduce the actual number of people. I, I don't think that's as big a contributor to this this runaway train as is the you know marketplace economics of what's driving salary and benefits. So. Yes, Sarah. <clears throat> I think we should move the vote. I don't think. I mean, these are gigantic topics. We could spend many, many days talking about every one of them, whether it's class, bigger class sizes, what research shows, and so forth. We have a very long agenda in front of us for a workshop, and I don't. I think. I feel relatively confident that more conversation is not going to yield a change in anyone's mind. So I'd like to suggest that we vote. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to say anything before we do that? No? I will. I will just say that I think every school board member and every town council member is exceptionally concerned, aware of and concerned about budgets and about the corresponding effect on taxes in town. I think we had a very different process this year than we had last year, and I think that we also had a very different set of numbers that we were working with this year than we had last year. And because of that, I am going to vote against the proposal on the table right now, the motion on the table right now, and I'm with you, Sarah. We will move the vote at this point and look for a vote all of those in favor of Kathy's motion and again <coughs> read it to us. Certainly. It's to reduce this proposed school budget one percent for a total budget of twenty four million forty four thousand six hundred sixty nine dollars and sixty cents. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? That motion does not pass. I need another motion for item number sixty one on the school budget approval. Is there someone who will make a motion? Okay. Yes. I'll give it a yeah. shot. Um, I move the town of Cape Elizabeth approve a school budget of twenty-four million two hundred eighty-seven thousand five hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. And yes. all the other language. Oh, and there. all the other language, so. which would be <laughs> as presented. As presented. All the other language as presented. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, the minutes will be have, reflected. As it. Okay, thank you. We have it in our packets. Do I have a second for that motion? Thank you, Sarah. Discussion on this motion? No? All in favor of this motion? Opposed? Thank you. That motion passes. We will move on to item number. 62, the approval of the Cumberland County Assessment. And Kathy, could I look to you one more time? If yes, I move that the motion. Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 9th, 2016, does hereby approve for inclusion in the fiscal year 2017 budget the assessment from Cumberland County 
for 2016 amounting to $1,171,612. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Sarah. Any discussion on that item? Yes. I'd like to go on record as stating that I think that the Cumberland County assessments are getting, becoming exorbitant, and um, I, for one, plan to be looking into that. Not that I know if I can do any, we can do anything about it, but I, it's getting very high. Thank you. Anyone else? I will agree with Jessica Sullivan on that and ask the town manager if he could just pass that along to the folks at the Cumberland County. You know, I'd, I'd be happy to. And you know, If you look at the county assessment, it's running roughly three times the increase that the municipal and school budgets are mm -hmm. in Cape right. Elizabeth from percentage viewpoint. They keep yeah. saying, well, it's a small part of the budget. Well, it is small, but it's becoming a bigger and bigger piece of it mm -hmm. all the time. And I think if you look at the numbers uh, of the percentage increases in the tax rate this year, uh, you know, there's the homestead exemption, which goes back to the taxpayers anyway. But the next, but the next biggest, really significant one is the county tax. It's up 5.6%. Wow. Okay. So we'll communicate it. Thank you. All in favor of that motion? Any opposed? I oppose it. Thank you. It's too high. <laughs> That motion passes. We'll move on to item number 63, the approval of the local homestead exemption funds. Could I ask the finance chair again to uh, make this motion? I move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council having held a public hearing on Monday, May 9th, 2016, does hereby approve for inclusion in the fiscal year 2017 budget the amount of $302,000 for the local share of homestead exemptions. I think it's 312,000. What did I, I'm sorry, 312,000, thank you. Thank you. Do I have a second on that? Second. Patty, thank you. Discussion? No? All in favor? Any opposed? That passes unanimously. We will move on to number 64, property tax levy limit. Kathy? I move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, in accordance with Title 30A MRSA Section 5721-A, the Town of Cape Elizabeth hereby increases the property tax levy limit for municipal services to to the take out the take out the word though to seven million one hundred and two thousand six hundred and eighty eight dollars. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you, Sarah. Discussion on that. Any comments, questions? No? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That passes. We will move on to item number 65, proposed 2017 general fund budget summary motion. Kathy, are you ready for that one? I'm going to let somebody else make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> had enough of you, and it's a long one. Yes, I'm sure you've Is had enough someone else too. who would like to make that motion? Do mm -hmm. you want me to make it? Sure. I move, read the whole thing. Yeah, I move um, that we, having held a public hearing on May 9th, 2016, we hereby adopt the general fund budget for the fiscal year 2017 with gross expenditures of $37,899,281 and gross revenues of $8,383,270. And can you speak a little louder? I'm sorry. And with the amount of uh, Twenty-nine million five hundred and sixteen and eleven dollars to be raised from taxation, and to fix Monday, October third, two thousand sixteen, and Monday, April third, two thousand seventeen, as the dates upon each of which one half of such tax is due and payable with interest to accrue upon taxes due and unpaid after each such date, at the rate of seven percent per annum, in accordance with thirty-six MRSA section five hundred six, the tax collection. Now the treasurer are authorized to accept prepayment or decline prepayment of taxes not yet committed or prior to any due date and pay no interest thereon. In accordance with 36 MRSA section 506-A, a taxpayer who pays an amount accepted by the tax collector and town treasurer in excess of the finally assessed shall be repaid the amount of overpayment plus interest from the date of overpayment at the minimum annual rate per annum set by the state of Maine. Thank you. Nice. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. Thank you. Patty, discussion or questions? 
Anyone? Yes, please. Yeah, I'd like to speak to this just briefly. I know you have another workshop. First, I want to uh, thank the council for their support of the budgets, and, and for, but also, even more so, I want to thank you for the, the discussion this evening. Uh, you know, I, we, we had a department head meeting on May 9th, and we also had a personnel advisory committee, which is made up of representatives and not department heads from every department, and that includes a representative of the Teamsters in the room, a, a representative of the police union, as well as from the other departments. And at both of those meetings, I said to them, that the municipal budget increases that we're seeing are, are not sustainable. Uh, we, had an, we had an increase last year uh, is, it, because of the new library construction of over 4%. Uh, this year, while the tax rate for municipal services is, up over two, is just up 2.4%, spending is up 3.8%. When you have a cost of living adjustment, this, these exact words I said that morning, of 0.09% CPI, Consumer Price Index, you can't be increasing your spending by 4%. That just is not sustainable. And, you know, I, no department heads disagreed. N none of the other folks disagreed. I, maybe they were a little taken aback. But one example I cited was that when the council did my evaluation this year and determined my pay, uh, one of, what they did was they did not give me a cost of living increase. And if you look at this budget, there's no cost of living increase for the town manager. Instead, there was a one-time bonus, which was equivalent to what an increase would have been, but by doing that, instead of just adding to the base, adding to the base, and adding to the base, it should slow things down in the longer term. And I use that as an example of things that we have to do. So, you know, I, I heard the comments this evening. Uh, I agree with them in principle, although, you know, but I, but I agree with everyone. I think it was late. I, you know, I spoke, I'm not going to repeat what I said. But I will pledge this. When I put together, working with the department heads, municipal budget for next year, you know, instead of uh, you know, a tax rate increase of 2.4%, I can, you know, unless we get some shock, it'll be less than half that next year. And similarly, our expenditure increase, my goal will be less than half of what it is this year. And that's even recognizing that for the projects I mentioned, We've only funded the principal in this budget. We still need to fund the interest in next year's budget. But our goal will be to, you know, at the staff level, to for the municipal budget to increase to decrease the levels this year by less than half of what they were this year, which is actually more than the one percent that some of the councils were talking about. But I think if we know we're heading in that direction, we know that's the focus. We know it is a year out that that's the focus. Working with the council at revenues and other things. You know, it, it's it's very attainable, very doable. You know, we've got a, we're not going to have big projects next year, uh, but uh, you know, we just we can't keep increasing taxes by this amount. I think everyone understands that, and I think you know, obviously, it needs to be continued dialogue. I'm only speaking the municipal budget, but you know, for uh, including the county, as was mentioned, uh, there needs to be continued dialogue on generally where we're going with this. So that's my comment on whatever item number this is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, yes, Kathy? Just um, the note that I'll be voting against this motion um, because it holds the li higher numbers that I had voted against earlier. Not because I don't want to fix the Monday, October 3rd and Monday, April 3rd as the dates when taxes are due. <laughs> Thank you. In full. Anyone, so. Anyone else? Yes, that's yeah, just echo Council Ray's comments. <clears throat> Anyone else? No? It's just one other quick thing. Yeah. I was just at an Eco Main meeting representing this council. And we, we went into executive session. We were discussing the, the, the general manager's salary. And we had a good discussion. I can't talk about what happened. You know, he does a great job. does a wonderful job. We came out of executive session. We said all that. And then we had a vote to increase his pay. I voted against it. Because they were increasing his pay by 4%. And even though he does a great, great job, wonderful job, I said, I wanted to be recorded as a no vote. Because that we can't keep increasing pay, those levels, and pay for it. And you know, and I said I wanted to be recorded as a no vote. And I told and I had a discussion with him afterward. It's not personal, it's not, it's just somewhere we need to get control of all this. And uh, you know, so it, it, it's it's not only but we need to do it in the other arenas in which we act to, be it at the negotiating table with the unions, be it uh, whatever form we're in to, to make sure that there, there isn't the, the 
the push over and over and over for more money, more money, more money. I'll get off my soapbox. Say. There will always be that push, of course, but I understand the point you're making. Okay. Anybody else? No. All in favor of that motion? Opposed? Thank you. That passes. Next up, I think we are done with all of the agenda items, and we will move on to citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to anything not on the agenda? No? Seeing none, we will move on. Um, before I ask for a motion to adjourn, I want to mention to the public that we are moving into a workshop after this regular meeting to review Paper Street's report and the status of council goals for the year. So with that, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Sarah. Any discussion? Yes. Yes. Actually, not about adjournment, but another issue. Okay. Um, it, it seemed, uh, to my understanding, our, our budget process with the school board was essentially the same as last year. I mean, we had the workshop, but I mean, it was the same process. I seem to remember that we started off with um, at least one earlier meeting this year than we had last year. And we had a meeting of the uh, school superintendent, the town manager, the school board chair, and I met in January to kick off that process and talk through what the expectations would be this year. And then we started in January, as I remember, with a presentation with the overview of um, kind of the big budget drivers. And I don't think we had that conversation last year, and certainly not at the level of detail that we had it this year. So I think we had a little bit um, more discussion and a little bit more of a presentation up front. So we were not as surprised by the time the school budget actually came to the council as we were last year. And as you remember last year, we had some big budget drivers in the opposite direction last year that we didn't have this year. Well, okay. So there were, so there were a couple of quasi-administrative meetings that took place that did not take place last year with the chairman or something. Yeah. Uh, the school board chair and the council yeah. chair met in January and then we had a, a full meeting here in yep, January yeah, where we had the big mm -hmm. budget driver discussion. We didn't have that last year either. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other discussion? No? Move to adjourn. Uh, all in favor of that motion? Any opposed? No? We are adjourned. We will.